Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm really happy to bring you this tutorial where I will teach you how to intensify color with soft pastel. It's a question I get all the time. The reference image is a lovely winter scene with a lot of neutral color that I decided to intensify. And I want to thank the photographer who shared his lovely photo on pixabay.com, Sebastian Nikael. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I hope you'll do that right now and click that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And just like my last video, I'm once again using the Arteza black acrylic pads. It comes in a set of two. I love these square six inch by six inch sized uh, pieces of black paper. They're water friendly. You can use oil, acrylic, and what I'm going to be using on this is clear gesso by Liquitex. Yay! So Bob Ross is excited. Now, the reason I'm doing this is clear gesso has a little bit of texture to it, almost like a little bit of sand in it. You can kind of see it um, when I apply it. I apply like two coats and it dries clear. And what that does is it gives me a little bit of texture to apply my pastels. Now these are Prismacolor New Pastels, spelt in you pastels and I'm just using this kind of medium value blue to get a general sketch in and once again this clear gesso a lot of times I apply it after I've already put down what I call an underpainting but in this case I really wanted to do some negative painting which is painting the spaces between things and black paper is awesome for doing that so I thought with this one I would just go ahead and uh, work on the black surface with the clear gesso applied now the last one that I did the last video I used this black paper and I did what was called an oil wash I used oil paints and pastels together and I missed a little bit of the footage where I did the oil wash so not to worry I have another tutorial coming where I do a another oil wash with soft pastels. I think that'll be the next one that I upload. So I am just getting in general shapes here and I like to keep it really sketchy. Now with roads, I often, or paths or whatever, I often like to keep my form a bit more geometric rather than curvy. Um, I think it has more of an artistic uh, feel to it rather than these curvy um, winding roads. So all I'm focusing on, I kind of zone out when I'm doing a sketch and um, just get in generalities. Also, it really helps if you're new at art, uh, it helps to sketch things out when you have your reference image the same proportions as your drawing surface. Now mine doesn't look that way here because I cropped it. I cropped my reference image to be square, just like this paper. And now I'll be using a combination of warm tones to get this sky in uh, with the Prismacolor New Pastels. New Pastels are harder than a lot of pastels and they're really great for doing an underpainting or initial layers and that's because they don't take up a lot of the tooth. With soft pastels, the reason we need the grit is it'll fall right off if it doesn't have something to hang on to. And some of the professional sanded papers, they're literally like sandpaper and they hold lots of layers. Um, so by putting the new pastels down first, you ensure that you're able to get more layers afterwards. You haven't filled up all of that tooth of the paper. And so what I'm doing now is I am, notice I'm not getting super specific about um, trees and shapes. I'm literally just squinting my eyes. I'm looking at colors, values, and shapes. And I kind of zone out and I, I forget about tree leaves and needles on pine trees. And I'm just painting shapes and colors right now and values at this point. Um, so I do come back and reshape things a little bit towards the end, but I wanted to go ahead and get in a general beginning for this sky that would kind of set the mood. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through this whole tutorial. Um, this is real time, a lot of this is real time. Uh, a little bit towards the middle here. I'm gonna speed it up so that we can get to um, the final, what I consider the real lesson in this is, is more towards the end where I really start to address the sky. So right now, this is just some generalities. I know that I wanna get in, I've learned over the years, many years of painting, that I don't paint what I see. I reinterpret it with color 
Uh, I intensify color often, but I'm using the rules of nature, which I'll talk about soon. Now, I used a few products in a video not long ago where you can liquefy pastels, water, alcohol, and this product, mineral spirits. Now, in hindsight, I really wish I'd have just left the pastels alone, but I was put on my scientific experimentation hat again because what this mineral spirits did here, this is typically how you use it. And on white paper, it actually intensifies the colors. And on this, it just kind of made them kind of bleed a little bit, but um, not to worry. When I blew it dry, it looks real dark when you put it on, but when it dries, it goes back to the original color. Now, why would I do this? Well, in this case, I don't think I should have, but in a lot of paintings, I really want to soften things up and give it more of a moody, impressionistic feel. Um, so, eh, wouldn't do this again. But now you can see when I blow it dry, it did kind of soften things a little bit. Um, and, you know, no harm done because uh, I can paint right over all of this. Now, what I'm doing, uh, it might sound strange to go in with darks on a black paper but actually this paper is black but it's not as dark as some of my pastels and uh, this dark blue pastel it's kind of like a dark navy blue I believe uh, mostly for this um, particular lesson I am using the Sennelier 120 half stick set of the Paris collection I do use a few other pastels such as the new pastels I used at the beginning. But um, my patrons, if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you'll be getting my color guide. I am trying now with every painting to give my color notes. And I make a little um, diagram of all of my colors and which manufacturers they're made by so that my patrons can uh, follow along or pick colors that are similar. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a really neat way for people to support artists and other creative people and it's a safe and secure way where um, you can uh, basically contribute five dollars a month and my patreon page and my patrons support has truly been what's helped me keep these videos coming um, during covid my husband and i lost our regular jobs and if it wasn't for um, my patrons and my patreon support I definitely couldn't keep these videos coming so thank you patrons by the way I have a special contest going on now if you become a patron you could win this painting and another one I'm giving two original paintings away they just looked good together so uh, if you've considered becoming a patron now might be the time to do it there's no long-term commitment uh, only with this uh, contest or promotion you have to become a patron in the month of December for five dollars and then you have to still be a patron on january 1st because that's when i'm having the drawing so i'll talk more about that at the end and everybody gets my free 2022 um, calendar with my original artwork so um on January 1st all of my patrons will get that it is a digital calendar I mean you have to print it out but I'm gonna give some neat things that you can do creatively all right you see I've added these darks in here and if you just look at the reference image and squint your eyes I mean that's all I'm doing too is I'm looking at where the darks are definitely those trees and uh, even coming into the foreground area and along some of the edges of where those ruts are in the snow on the path there now here's where the magic starts this is one of these gorgeous colors that's in the Sennelier Paris collection and uh, I often say I have numerous titles I could give videos um, but I need to stay uh, concise and stick to one about the dramatic sky but I could have called this snow isn't white um, and uh, I mean it is white in the right lighting but in so many cases snow is in shadow um, or it can be in the sunlight and it can have a little bit of a warm uh, color to it so uh, I'm just using this little teal color middle value pastel to kind of scumble in notice my marks are very light to the touch and kind of sketchy I like that look especially at the beginning and uh, it really once you learn to get that light touch you're going to save yourself so much frustration. Your colors are going to appear more fresh, and you'll also have the ability um, to layer more on top. If you're very heavy-handed, you fill up the tooth of your paper very quickly. Your pastel colors start to look muddy. Um, pastels literally have like these little crystals in them that sparkle. And if you press too hard and over layer, you muddy your colors and you lose that 
color vibrancy that is inherent to this medium. I'm going to do another video one day on, um, I think I'm going to call it 10 reasons why soft pastels are my favorite medium. There are some very unique things about soft pastels, and I think that's why so many people have fallen in love with them. Now, if you've been on my channel long, you know I work in other mediums. I happen to love watercolor too, and uh, I've really been enjoying uh, oil, the little bit I've played around with it. So, you never know what you'll get on this channel. All right, so that little teal pastel was used for the road and some of the snow on the trees. Now, this set I love. It is the Mount Vision Thunderstorm Gray set. These are beautiful neutrals. Notice how they're all kind of dull in color. They're neutral. And neutrals are a very powerful part of your painting. What neutrals do is they allow the bright colors uh, the bold, high intensity, high saturation colors to really shine and do what they they need to do, which is say, hey, look at me, I'm the focal point. And so the neutrals help to be the supporting cast to direct your eye to those more punchy colors, as I like to call them. So I've been using these Mount Vision pastels here um, that are a tad more neutral. I mean, they're still very pretty colors. And as I mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the concepts and the principles for painting the sky towards the end. A little bit about color temperature, uh, value, and color intensity. All right, now I've got a pastel that is a little bit warmer. Can you see it looks a little bit more mauve, uh, very neutral though. And the reason I'm using that color, it's these background trees. They are, I'm going to develop them a little bit more, but they are near the sun and therefore they would have a little bit more warmth to them. Okay, now I've gone to this beautiful, this is part of the Mountain Vision um, pastels again, the Thunderstorm Gray set. You see it's got a hint of a, a lavender uh, color to it. Also, that's even a little more warm than say like a blue, a cold blue. Lavender has a little bit more uh, red in it. Uh, now I'm going down towards the bases of some of these trees. I know they're, these are the ones that are a little further away, but they're still going to have some dark on the shadow side, on the side that's more like where the viewer is, and also down where they're in shadow, more towards the bases. Now I knew I had not really gotten all the shapes in um, or the values in correctly at first. And when I was making that sky, I lost some of the tree shapes. I wasn't worried about it because I knew I could develop them like I'm doing later. Notice that one really tall pine tree way in the back there or evergreen, some kind of tree. So I'm just getting that. I liked it. I thought that was a good um, point of interest. And now I'm just making uh, with evergreens and um, pine trees, the branches seem to kind of go in a little zigzaggy way. And I like to keep Keep these just spontaneous and I'm really just sort of looking at the shapes of the tree. I don't get all uh, caught up or hung up on it being exactly like the tree as long as it, is, as it has that general essence of evergreen or pine tree. And so that's all you need. Often I think uh, we think art is harder than it is. It's really just shapes and color, <laughs> you know? So uh, we don't, it's, and often too, we don't need to paint everything that's in the photo. We want to preserve uh, the detail and the higher contrast for our focal point. And for me, even though this road brings you in with some very interesting color and um, sketchy kind of quality, it's that sunset in the back, those beautiful um, glowing colors that are going to be the main focal point. Now you see I've just scumbled across some other uh, of this uh, Mount Vision. It's another neutral and I know I'm using colors that you wouldn't you know just at first glance think are in this reference image but I am using the reference image as a guide and I'm using the um, logic and truth of how color behaves in nature and in a scene like this. For example, if you've got cooler scenes, uh, things that are in shadow, your colors are going to be cooler. I know that that road, if I was to go in with Photoshop and grab like one of the lightest lights off that road, it's really just going to be kind of a dull gray, and uh, but it's going to have some color to it. You know what? Let me do that to uh, prove my point. 
Okay, here I am in Photoshop with my reference image. I'm grabbing the paintbrush tool. Whoa, that's that brush size is way too big. So I'm going to reduce the brush size. This is not a Photoshop lesson. It's just a way to prove my point about color. Now you see this little triangle over here to the upper far um, right? That's um, going to respond to my color picker. I just did something where my tool turned into a little eyedropper and it chose the color that was in that sky. Now where I put it over there, the little circle on there, that's the color. Now if you go to the left, colors get more neutral. I'm talking about the little triangle. If you go down, colors get brighter. And uh, so what I'm going to do, let me grab um, something in the snow. I'll pick right there and you'll see it change over on the little triangle. That's the actual color. Okay, it's, see I told you it's kind of a gray, like a dull gray. I don't know if you can see this on your screen size, but if I move horizontally in, in respect to the triangle, um, it's going to make the color brighter, but keep it the same value. So what I just did is I punched up the color in that area, but kept the value the same. I hope that makes sense because I'm saying that all the time when I'm doing lessons is you can get creative with color if you get the value right. Now I picked another area. See how dark that area was? But if I move over to the right and choose a color that's a little bit more vibrant, I can use it in the same area and it makes sense because the value, the lightness or the darkness is the same. So you want to get your value right, but you can intensify the color when your value is the same. So hoping that makes sense. I'm just clicking around so you can see how it moves. And also I can change that circle that goes around the triangle. I can move it and make a color warmer. I just made it more teal. And so I kept the same value, but I changed the degree of uh, coolness or warmness to the color. I, I wanted some teal in there, but I have my value correct. Um, again, I know this is a, a real fast paced Photoshop lesson. Now I decided to cool it off and put some purples in there. I probably got that one a little bit too light. And now if I wanted to give a little more color to the light areas of the road, the same thing. I can use the color picker. I can choose a color that's a little bit more vibrant within the same value, same lightness or darkness, and I can make the road a bit more colorful and interesting. So obviously we're not going to be doing this in Photoshop. We're doing it by the pastels that we choose. Go for the value that's correct but you can intensify the color a bit and, and don't overdo it. Okay. I I'm probably even overdoing it with this example, just so you can see it. But if you just punch up the color, that's why I like that word just a little bit and keep the value the same. Your paintings are going to be um, more vibrant with color. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the sky. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit though, so you can see it. So I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to choose one of the um, orangey. I've already done a little bit of it actually in this example. I'm picking some of the yellow and I'm actually making it a little darker. Now this is a case where I am changing the value a bit. What I do with sunsets is I know, I know the principle of sky holes is where when things are um, filtered or they've got leaves and branches and everything in the way, the colors seem to get a little darker in value. And so I purposely intensify that when I'm doing sunsets. I think of my source of light, which is the sun, and I know that it's going to be bright, but down where the trees are, it's going to be a little darker and I make it a little more rich. Again, that's my focal point. Now I'm playing around with some color. You see how I added some pinks there? Now, why would I move towards pink as I move away from the sun? Basically, I'm just using the same principle as I mentioned before. Consider the sun. Anything near the sun is going to be warmer. We've got oranges, reds, yellows. As things move away from the sun, they cool off. And if you just think of the color wheel, colors are going to lean a little bit more towards pink as they leave the yellow, orange, and red area. Then they gradually will turn to purple and gradually to blue. So I'm using the principles of the color wheel with respect to light. And uh, also right now I grabbed a little bit of blue, kind of a grayish blue. The upper heavens are usually just a little bit darker. So I'm using my artistic license to darken that up a bit. It's going to create it uh, more of a mood. And usually the upper heavens are going to be cooler. And why is that? They're away from the source of the sun. And if you just use some of these principles, once you learn them, it's like I always say, 
painting isn't hard it's just learning some rules and learning how nature behaves all right so let's get back to the painting and i will talk more about those principles when i get back to the sky again towards the end of this and once again most of this is real time i'm going to speed up in in just a bit uh, some of this middle section so we can get to talking about that sky and um, notice too i'm using these uh, now that's a, a nice cool blue it's almost a uh, pure ultramarine blue color and it's just such a nice cool color to use for the snow again the snow is I'm, I'm not choosing to use whites or grays for snow um, in uh, every part you know in some parts this is a little bit more neutral a little more gray and again you need neutrals uh, for other things to stand out and here's where I'm going to speed it up just a tad. If this is not overly sped up. You should still be able to follow. And I'm going to add you some nice music until we get back to that sky and talking about how to uh, create the drama and intensity for a beautiful, colorful sky that makes a clear focal point. All right, guys, enjoy the music. I'll be back.
Oh, I hope you enjoyed that music to my painting process. One of those songs was pretty lively. All right, now I'm going to move in to do more of the sky, but I wanted to slow it up here to show you that I'm adding a little bit more dark to some of the tree trunks. I still have some of the uh, color principles going where the trees towards the back are a little more lavender. Uh, they're catching a little bit more of the sun. They're going to be warmer than the trees in the foreground. Now, here's back to that principle that I showed you in Photoshop where I punch up the color. Now, this is where I'm, I've been very light-handed for most of the painting, but I'm giving a little bit more pressure here because this is my focal area, and I'm doing what's called negative painting here. I'm painting the spaces between the trees, and I'm just making these little marks, but the darkest ones were down deeper where they would go into the branches, and as they get more where there's open spaces, they get a little bit lighter. And of course, where the source of the sun is, you're gonna have your most yellows or lighter uh, colors. And I usually don't go light, as in white, what your brain might say. I go brighter, meaning it's still a lighter value, but it hasn't lost its color intensity. And so, as I said before in the Photoshop example, and now I'm using kind of a mustardy color, I want to transition between that red and the lightest or the brightest yellow, I should say. So I'm moving a little from red to orange to my um, lighter yellow. And now, again, I'm using this still where the sun might be. I'm trying not to get too far away from that sun, but where the yellows won't be quite as light in value. Um, think of it again like the color wheel radiating out now I am adding a little bit of this to the path there may be some of that Sun that is peeking through some of those trees it wouldn't be much um, and I think this one was a little bit too light I kind of uh, toned that down afterwards but yeah you might have some of that light cast onto the road um, but consider that's why I always said become a student of nature and look at your surroundings it's really just how it behaves now here again getting away from the Sun that's why I went more towards Towards pinks it's on the color wheel moving away from yellows oranges reds then you're gonna get to pinks then you're gonna get to lavenders and purples um, now I'm using this lavender this is part of the Sennelier set um, to catch some of that snow that's on these branches once again I'm not going for white for snow it is lighter but it's not um, it's not a white light color and uh, I thought this color was perfect for just um, dancing around and making some indications of snow. Now I grabbed this little bit of a teal color. I thought that would just be interesting. It's, um, it's a little warmer uh, than a blue, and uh, I thought it just made a neat combination with some of that blue and that pink I had already put down. And that's the beauty of pastel layering. If you keep a light touch, all of the colors when you layer them they interact with each other and they play and they have fun and and that's why you don't want to have such a heavy hand because you destroy that you destroy that ability to see the other colors peeking through each other so again just doing a little negative painting carving into some of these trees um, and i don't get uh, overly uh, carried away or worried about if all of my little shapes are just right i just look at where it would feel artistic you know and um and what might uh, just look painterly and loose. And this is a little bit of a, a lavender pink. And again, I'm getting a little closer to the source of the sun. And I wanted to lighten up um, some of the sky. I felt like it was a little too heavy. And this uh, lighter value was a good transition. 
So I hope those principles I've described helped. I know I destroyed uh, sunsets and sunrises when I first started painting with pastels and I remember studying other artists. This was back before I had a whole lot of, uh, there were many YouTube videos. I, I mean, I'm old guys. <laughs> and so I had to really just study um, paintings and look at what they were accomplishing or doing. All right, so can you see the transition um, from the reds to the oranges to the yellows to the pinks to the more lavenderies to finally up to the blues in the heaven now again i i've got this is my little new pastel i just snuck in a little bit of those uh darker colors once again in the tree negative spaces you're especially when they get down towards um towards the trunk where it's getting deep into the tree those values are going to get darker and i reserve the right to um or the tendency to uh over um, accentuate certain colors i just wanted it in a few areas and mostly it was that first red that i put down that really was the bam that red in contrast with the cool blues back there that is one of the focal point strategies that's going to really cause the viewer's eye to go there and uh, if you haven't seen it i have a video i really studied a lot to create this video i think it's called five ways to create a focal point and uh, that is one of them, is uh, color contrast, uh, where you have uh, opposites on the color wheel. And, uh, and now I, I, I've kind of dulled out the sky in the upper heavens. Why would I do that? Well, if I had all this drama and color intensity in the upper heavens, your eye would go there. It'd be bouncing around all over the place. I want to reserve it for that end of the road. Um, I realized I had lost some of my tree branches. That, that evergreen in the front was a little bit bigger. And uh, so, you know, the great thing is, even with this clear gesso, look at the layering I've been able to achieve. And I will say, I really like this black uh, Arteza paper. You can work on regular black paper. It doesn't seem to curl as much. By the time I'm done, these really flatten out nicely. And something about it being made for acrylic and oil paints, it just really receives the clear gesso very well. And um, I'll definitely use these again. And Arteza products are, they're affordable. So uh, I do have, just so you know, I have still in the month of December, this painting and the one before, I would say is a little more intermediate level. And I wanted to bring some for my beginners. You beginners are so appreciative every time I do something focused for you. So I created four paintings on watercolor paper, a very affordable surface, um, and show you guys how to break it down, simplify um, your subject more. They're, these paintings are um, not quite so um, detailed. Um, and just easier, you know, so, and I had fun with them. They're real loose and lively. So those are coming soon. I tell you what, creating the videos really takes longer than the paintings. So <laughs> for any of those out there who uh, maybe uh, create videos yourself or have a YouTube channel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I uh, now, ooh, wait, I got to say one more thing. You see, this is like a neutral, almost green. And I thought that would be kind of interesting back there once again greens a little warmer right than the blues so that green um, closer to the Sun the Sun is gonna make things appear um, more of what their real color is and we know these trees most likely in the light would have green in them uh, and think of uh, color this way as light decreases the color intensity decreases. I mean, I just went in my closet the other day. I didn't want to wake my husband up. He, he can't stand it when I turn the, I'm an early bird. He doesn't want me turning the light on. Um, so I try to go in my closet in the dark. There's a little bit of light from a nightlight and pick out um, what I'm gonna wear. I had the most horrible outfit on <laughs> because you can't see color. Okay, here's the final. It was a simple little six by six painting that packed a powerful, dramatic punch with that sky. And once again, the majority of the pastels I used were the Sennelier Paris collection. Uh, I also too, if your colors uh, or your pastels don't come with a color chart, I always make my own like this. It's a great way to refer back to a color you may be getting low on and you want to order another one. Also too, for my patrons, I will have your color guide. You can see all the colors that I use to create this painting.
And as I mentioned before, if you become a patron of mine in the month of December and you're still a patron on January 1st, you will be entered into a chance to win this painting and also the painting from the last tutorial I uploaded. I thought they both just looked so beautiful together. I sat them next to each other. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to give these away together. So we'll have one winner for that and all, all my patrons are entered to win. So make sure you become a patron, be a patron on January 1st, and you will not only get a chance to win both paintings, but every single patron of mine will be getting a 2022 art calendar featuring my original artwork with some of my favorite Bible verses. Now this is a digital calendar, okay? I wanna make sure everybody knows that. I'm not mailing out a calendar to you know, 500, 600 people. So you do print it out. I've printed them out on some cardstock from my printer and they look great. And I have some creative ways I can share with you guys how to display it. I put a little clip at the top of mine and I'll put it on a little stand and I'm ready for 2022. So, all right guys, God bless you all. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying these lessons and I have some beginner winter scenes on the way. Happy painting.